Go. Hey, what's up? It's your boy Melvin Ben, aka Melman. We just rocked out with Coco, myself, get the comment out of our door. Make sure y'all support this club, man. We on Seven Island Greenfield in the hot spot. We got a new club, new environment, new management. We doing it big, man. Oh, everything I love. Make sure you at our court. Y'all see the pictures, y'all see the videos. It's on point. You can't lose, man. Right? Before we get this started, we start off every show like this. I want to give thanks to the almighty Jesus, because without him, none of this would be possible. Give it up. I want y'all to give it up for yourselves. Y'all looking beautiful tonight. We got somebody real special in the house for y'all. She's been on Comic View. She's been on BET. She's been on the Apollo. She done tore the house down everywhere she's went. She's a co-star of a talk show here called Mason in the Morning. Put your hands together and give her an encore round. Give it up for Miss Coco! And you all have followed me throughout my comedy career from Bees to All Jokes Aside, yeah. Coco's House of Comedy. My brother over here in the corner that was my business partner at Coco's House of Comedy. I want to give you all, the people that really, really know me, a special round of applause for supporting me and loving me and believing in me. Y'all give us some support. Yeah. Welcome to my world. Give y'all some a round of applause. Yeah. So, it, it, it's a few things that I gotta say and get out the way. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank the owner, owners, and the staff, and the management, and everybody for um, believing in the dream and the vision. It's something I want to do. I get people that come up and say, "Hey, when you going you know, we want to come to where you at? Where you doing your comedy thing?" So when we sat out here about a month or so ago in the corner and we started talking and he said, okay, that'll be fine. We can do that. I felt good that somebody believed in my vision, in my dream as much as I do. Because it's about doing a show, quality show, having a good time. Because I know y'all got to go to work in the morning. Y'all got to go somewhere in the morning. I don't know where y'all got to go. But y'all got to go somewhere. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to judge you. Wherever you gotta go, you go where you gotta go. Couple announcements I'd like to make. If you got a cell phone, put that mug on vibrate, please. But don't vibrate. If you got a beeper, a beeper, damn, I don't even know how to even address that if you got a beeper. You stuck, I just wanna say that. I hope you're a physician or something. If you got a crazy baby daddy, let security know. So we can slide you out the back door and get you to safety. So let us know whatever's going on in your life. Welcome to the way staff. The chef is off the chain. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm doing water aerobics and all that stuff, but it's so many delightful treats on the menu. I said delightful treats. I did. The lamb chops, the chicken wings. So I said, okay, I ain't gonna eat after the show, and you know how we do, eat on the way home. We be on the lodge eating. 
throwing the chicken wings out the window. That's so disrespectful. That's so damn disrespectful. Y'all, listen. Don't throw the chicken wings out the window. Put them in the box on the other side. And then y'all try to eat complicated stuff and drive. You can't eat broccoli and drive. You get home, you got food all down your booze. Don't do that. So, want to let you know, every last Wednesday of every month, we do one show a month, and it's the last Wednesday of every month. Last Wednesday, every month. It won't be complicated. If you know somebody and they think they funny, or they think they want to be a comedian, or they think they bought this life, and then what they say is, you ain't bought this life. Yeah, living is about this life. That's all I'm saying. Tell them to come down. We do an amateur night. You can sign up. And the amateur portion of the evening is from 8.30 to 9 o'clock. You could have won $50 this week. We didn't have anybody that wanted to win. So next week, you can win $100. Oh, it gets good. Now you're like, y'all should have signed up. It's the first of the month. Y'all should have signed up. All of y'all ain't got the sugar daddy that's going to, you know, with a whole bunch of rings on doing his hand like this. I hate that. Ooh, don't talk to me. Ernest, please don't be doing a hand like that. <laughs> Old ass hands, do it like this. I don't want you to ride in their car. I'm like, we can't even date. You got on too many underwear. You got on too much, you got on too many clothes. I guess I'm going through the change of life. Everything made me hot. I feel like my booty crying right now. I am in full menopause. And guys come over, they think I be trying to be sexy. I'm like, look, I'm trying to live. I'm trying to live. I don't have no furniture because I gave all my furniture away because I ordered some other furniture. And when the delivery man got to the house, they couldn't get my furniture around my steps. So but we sorry we can't get the furniture around the steps. I said, you know, if you was really from the hood, you would tie a rope to it and we could just lift it up the little balcony thing and bring it on in. They tell me it's a safety risk. It's just a, mm, okay, whatever. So I'm going through the change of life. So men, if I dated you and you come to my house and I'm laying in the bed naked, you had nothing to do with that. <laughs> when I got this sheet pulled between my legs like this, and it's a titty hanging out on each side, know that it's not for you. Now you're welcome to enjoy it, but it ain't for you. It's just about flat out menopause. In the wintertime, I got my window crack and the fan on. Y'all know ladies, y'all see y'all. Life. I just fell asleep with a Ziploc bag of ice on my coochie like this, like, oh my God. This is the best thing I have ever had in my life. And I guess it was so hot, the ice melted, and I woke up and forgot the ice was down there, and I was like, oh God, I done peed the bed. Lord, oh God. Now I'm going through the menopause, and I got incontinence. What is going on in my life? Now I need to depends. Lord Jesus. <laughs> I had some real cute shoes to match my outfit, but they weren't comfortable. So I said, I wear my flip flops. We found me, my feet clean. Now my toes, my daddy, you know how your mama tell you, you got certain things from your daddy? My daddy gave me these big toes. That's all he gave me, I love him for it. I tell my daughter, if you meet a man, ask him, can you see his feet? If his toes look like mine, he your cousin, and don't <laughs> It's small, this stuff you got to look for. Like, you know, I dated a guy that I didn't know, he was a little cock eye, but I didn't know. And the owl only cock when he got mad. And he kind of went to the side a little bit. And I tried to, you know, when you talk to somebody and they got a tangled eye, you try to act like the eye ain't tangled. So you be trying to figure out what side of them you gonna look at, because you don't want to stare at the eye. But I'm thinking, fuck it, you know your eye cock. Well, I'm acting like your eye ain't cock. This is your eye. Your mama did this to you. You know your eye, cop. Huh? And I love young men. I'm trying to get away from young men. I want a man close to my age. I'm 52. I want a man at least 40 something. I keep dating younger men, though, 35, 36. Me and their mama went to school together. I be feeling so bad about myself. I be feeling some kind of way. But old men got too many instructions. And then, I don't know who told these old ass men 
that now you retired from the plant and you got a young girlfriend, that you should have a baby. If you don't sit your ass down, Jesse, you too old. No, no. And you know when old men have kids, because listen, the kid be born with a receding hairline. <laughs> And you be looking at the baby, you don't know what to say. Regular baby, they still think pacifier in the middle of their mouth. Just one, one, one. An old baby got it to the side like a new boy. I'm like, why does this baby suck the pacifier like Popeye? Old ass babies. And he kept showing me pictures of his son. Tell me, see, he was too old here. I'm like, damn. He looked like a sales rights leader. <laughs> was he a salesman? He looked like he was a salesman. He had a white shirt on with ink pins in his little pocket. I'm like, damn, he old. <laughs> he was old with this. I don't want that. I don't want that. Because see, I look at it like this. And this, this, this may be an interesting strategy, but this is how I see it. So listen. My left knee is titanium. I had my knee replaced a few years ago. So I got issues with my right knee. So I go to water aerobics, but that's a challenge because the pool only four feet, six inches. I'm six two. So I'm doing water aerobics like I'm skiing. I'm down like this, doing water aerobics. I'll be like, this is some bullshit here. And I'm hurting even more. I need a Norco right now. Let me go to my locker and get myself together. So I just, I don't want an old man. He boogered up, I'm boogered up. He got on some shoes, but they got orthotics in them. <laughs> or you want them old men that don't know he old? You see him. He got on Tim's, but he got gout. <laughs> and he didn't cut the toe of the timberless out. Just a sun, sun, sun's roof on the top of the shoes. And he got on all the wrong hip hop clothes. They all wrong. South Pole, uh, Carl Canai. I'd be like, you been shoplifting in former meals? Why you got your own shit on? And then they want to go and down in here and check like, who told you to do this, Raymond? You too old. Shit, they listen. Not dark brown, and it's that stuff in the yellow box. What's the stuff called? Biggin, Bichine, y'all know what I'm talking about. That too. They get the jet, jet is black that they can find. Yeah, they color their hair jet black. They color their mustache, their eyebrows. Everything jet black. Then when they start sweating, it's like lines running down their face. And you talking to him, but it looks like you talking to him through a jail cell. You're like, wait, wait, hold on, what's going on? You can't, you can't do it, you can't. Hey, am I taking the lights more off or no? I just need to know. I can't take my Zenit and go out and get my room and It's going to have the same effect. The lights just come on. Yes, they did. Okay, let me, let me know. Is it going to get me to you? Shout out to you. So I want they, you know, I just did too much self medicate. Y'all want it? Y'all did that on purpose? I'm sure y'all can see me. Can y'all see me? I mean, damn. Okay. All right. I want everybody to be able to see me. Follow me on Instagram, Coco the Comic. Uh, men, quit putting um, the pictures of other men penises on your page. Yeah, I said it. Yes. Yes. Because I'm so tired of looking at them Neapolitan penises. I don't know what to do. Y'all know what Neapolitan ice cream is. It's chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. And I saw one of them in person. I'm like, oh, no, I don't do them. Uh-uh. No, uh, you need to put that in a, a, a banana split or something. I don't, why is it three colors like that? I, I don't like that. Then it had the wrong kind of hook on it. It was, it was left-handed. It kind of lit. I don't want that. I said, let's, let's go get us some steak bites or something. I just, I don't like them. I didn't got to the point. I'm real. I'm looking at it too, ladies. You better look. Y'all listen. Y'all listen. I'm serious. Y'all better look. Don't let them just come in the room and the room all dark. The only thing going on is the end of a blunt. Uh-uh. The lights on. It's like Apple on your cell phone. And look at it. Pick it up. Look up under it and everything. Y'all better look. 
No, I'm just willy nilly. You so hot and you just run up in you. No, I'm looking. I want to see this. See if there's any moles or scratches or you done had surgery on it. Y'all better look. Me and y'all better look too. Y'all better cut a light on or get a candle or something. She just set the mood with a candle. Take one of them up. Bad for body works candles and hold right there and look at her real good. Y'all better look. Look. It's real out in this, okay? It's real out here. Y'all listen to these songs. These songs got y'all messed up. Eat your booty like groceries. No, thank you. No, thank you. I like my groceries in a bag. No, thank you. Costco's and Sam's Club. You ain't doing no, no. And I don't even want a man to say that to me. Hey, oh, uh, you think when you finish that you could, uh, no, no, I can't. Because what masculine position can a man be in when his booty too long? I mean, how can you? Ain't no masculine, you on the side? How are you doing that? I mean, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I hate that you asked me to do this. I mean, what, and, and what happened in our conversation that you felt like you could really ask me to partake of your booty like this? I just, we were talking about the tigers and all that, then you was like, hey, you think you could, uh, I mean, they went way beyond head and all that, you know, mom, you know, mom, you know, that, that booty thing. What about your booty? How you gonna lay though? I mean, you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just, you get old, I can't, I can't do it, I can't do it. Now I give you a vicious, uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, I just can't do that. And your toenails gotta be right. Ooh. Oh yeah, the finger, oh baby, the fingernails. Listen, the wrong fingernails will give you trick of you better know that. Listen, the dirty fingernails, and then he scratches hair and they get dirty. Oh, hell no! <laughs> he was like, his fingernails got dirtier when he scratches his hair. I can't do them. Me and tell real men don't. Yes, real men do get manicures. Yes, you do. Get you a manicure. Stip your fingers in some bleach water or some OxyClean or something. I can't. And get your feet done, fellas. I ain't saying get no clear nail polish on, but get a buff. Them toenails look like sunflower seed shells. I'm scared of them. You got a fungus? Why your toenails discolored like this? What is wrong? We, we need to talk to somebody. They got something for this. Okay. So listen. A couple house rules or uh, house considerations I want you to take to effect. Please keep a table conversation to a minimum. To be courteous to everybody else that is around you. Yes, we got folded chairs out. Yes, we do. So y'all ain't gonna go and tell me they have folded chairs. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We do. We do. We do. We do. But they the sturdy ones. They the sturdy ones though. You feel me? They're the big girl friendly ones. They ain't the ones like you had a Bible tip revival and you know, all your weight on your toes and you got a man like this. And it's going into the gravel. You got to fake like you shot so you won't fall. You got the sturdy ones. You got the sturdy ones. I just got to keep it 100. I just, I don't know any other way. I went to pick up a rental car today and the only car they had was a Kia Sportage. Now listen to me. Hear me, hear me. The guy was like, well you could go to one of our other locations. I said, listen, I gotta put my truck in the shop. I'll take it. Look here. Y'all should have seen me getting that Kia Sportage. <laughs> Baby. I told the guy, I said, take a picture. He said, we're not allowed to do that. I said, you should take this picture. Because I didn't let the seat back. Then I let the back of the seat back. <laughs> then I tried to go in booty first. That didn't work. 
I tried to go in feet. When I finally got in, I was like, ooh, damn, okay, um, wow. Ain't no sport to this, but okay. And it's red too, so I can't hide. I can't hide. It's like a little ladybug, but I love it. I might go buy me one. It'd be my stalking car. <laughs> oh my goodness, I gotta say this before we, we kick off the show. I can't wait to get my invitation to my first gay male wedding. Gay male. Yeah, so guys, oh man, you know it's gonna be fabulous. Listen, I, I listen, I ain't judging nobody. But I have gay friends and I can't wait till they have their wedding. Cause it's gonna be fabulous. Baby, you know it's gonna be fabulous. They gonna have all their good Judy's there. They gonna have doves. Kwame might even be at the wedding, I don't know. They gonna be to put a pond in their yard. You be like, damn, I ain't know David had a pond in his yard. He got one now. They gonna have the best DJ, the best food, all kind of everything. It's what I cannot wait to get an invitation to my first gay meal with me. But it's going to be fabulous. Haircut gonna be meticulous. The dress is gonna fit. The big girls is in the wind. Oh baby, they gonna have on the waist cinches and everything. They gonna be. They gonna be so tight, they gonna be able to breathe, they gonna be breathing like this. <laughs> I can't wait! Now the next day, you might not see him no more. Cause they had to pay for the wedding with somebody else's credit card, but all I'm saying is... Things are. I don't even know. 
<laughs> well, that joke, I just Googled shit only black people fuck with. And that's what... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm joking, kind of. Um, I, uh, man. Anybody in here married? Clap if you're married. Who's married? Everybody, all right. No, I asked who's married. A friend of mine the other day proposed to his girlfriend. Yeah, he had a nice, big, beautiful ring. It was romantic, you know? It was romantic. And then she, of course, said no. Yeah, that's awkward. And that makes me scared to ask the question someday. You know what I mean? Because I have to have a plan B for everything in life. I have to have a plan B. That's why if I ever ask a woman to marry me, it's on April 1st. <laughs> I'm not looking stupid. That's it. April Fool's bitch. Whatever. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not looking stupid in this situation. I'm not going to happen. I, uh, I am broke. Who else in here is broke? Who's broke? <laughs> the married people plus a few more. That's cool. <laughs> oh, man. I owe a lot of money in student loan debt. I do. I owe a lot of money in student loans. Uh, no intention of paying any of it back. <laughs> at all. I, like, the more money I owe, the better I feel. It's weird. Like, I owe so much money that to me, the number is imaginary. Anybody owe an imaginary amount of money? I'm the only one. Like the, look, I'm sure somebody else understands what I'm saying. It's like, all right, there, so you're like, let's, let's say I owed you $20. I would feel obligated to make sure I paid this man back $20. But if I owe you over $20,000, you're not getting five. <laughs> Hell is the point in trying, really? It's kind of stupid. Somebody tried to collect some student loan debt the other day. He gave me a call. He's like, is this Jeffrey Horst? I'm like, yes, this is him. He's like, Jeffrey, I'm calling to inform you that you have an outstanding balance. <laughs> wow, thank you. Uh, an outstanding balance. Well, I am flattered there, sir. Thank you for the kind words. Let me tell you something, buddy. If you think it's so outstanding now, wait till next month when I still don't pay you shit. It'll be a fucking spectacular balance. I'll call you next month. Let's set the high score with this balance. Um, I realized I, uh, I need to watch my spending. I spend way more money than I have. I'm really terrible at it. And I thought it was a good idea through my bank. Uh, I got that set up where they send me a text message alert whenever I'm low on funds. Yeah, that's the problem. I'm always low on funds. And I don't even have unlimited text messaging. So now I got overages. That backfired really quickly. I, I remember the first time I got this text message alert. I was on a first date. Anybody here ever been on a first date? Yeah. Two of you? You were all fucking married a second ago. Uh, you married people are skipping some steps. Holy shit. It's it just like, you're pretty, I'm pretty. Let's do this shit forever. What's up? Anyways, anyways. I was on a first date. And uh, even though I'm telling you how broke I am, I'm not cheap. You know what I mean? So I'll spend money on a first date, so she's just like, what are you gonna get? I'm like, I don't know, maybe the lobster. Maybe, maybe the lobster, maybe a bottle of champagne. Then my phone vibrates. She's like, who is that? I'm like, Chase Bank. What are they saying? They're saying that I'm getting the grilled cheese and the water. Yeah. Hey, look at that, it says you're getting the PB&J and a side salad. I need 10 for gas. So that's I, I learned at a really young age that you should never uh, complain about being broke to uh, your parents or your grandparents. You know? You guys here have the same grandparents. Everybody has the same grandparents. You can't complain to your grandpa. You never can, you know? My grandpa would always exaggerate everything that he had growing up, though. He would always exaggerate how, uh, how tough it was, you know? He would say some shit like, Back in my day, gas was so cheap, they gave us a dollar. Like, shut the fuck up, Grandpa. Gas yeah, so was never negative one dollar at the pump. You never, 
never made money, didn't go out, didn't have so many grants. But oh, here's another one he would always say all the time. You guys have probably heard of this. He said, he was at, when I was your age, I was so poor, I had to put water in my cereal. <laughs> That's fucking disgusting. Why did you do that? I don't know if you know this about cereal. You can have it plain, Grandpa. It's good right out of the box. I, uh, I don't know if you're poor. I do know that you made poor decisions. Grandpa, you're stupid. Uh, some of you are looking at me like you just realized for the first time you didn't have to have water in your cereal. Like this is... You just learned some shit tonight. Like, yeah, I could have just took a handful of it. I don't know. The reason I can't complain about being broke, I need to realize, I need to be humble, you know? I remember I would always turn on TV late at night when I was growing up. I was turning on the TV late at night and I saw that infomercial with the kids on it. You guys ever see that? Yeah. And it started the same way every single time, didn't it? Didn't it? You guys see it on the picture box machines. You guys ain't talking back to me. You guys ever see it? Yeah. It started the same way every single time. It always started out with like some kid in Africa, right? He's got, a, he's got a stick, and he's just playing in a mud puddle, right? Yeah, like he couldn't play tag for free. Yeah. You're poor and not creative. How about that? Imagination's free on every continent, people. I don't know if you know that. Anyways, playing in the mud puddle. Random old white man walks into the screen out of nowhere, just for 10 cents a day. For only 10 cents a day. You can feed and clothe this child. Food and clothes. 10 cents a day. And I'm looking at this like, you know what? I gotta do something. I have to do something. I have to start shopping smarter. Uh, 10 cents for food and clothes? Where the hell do you get those type of deals? Uh, I shop around people. I don't see that anywhere. Then you hear parents complaining. What do you parents talk about? Send the kids to college. Send the kids to college. Send these kids to Africa. It's only 10 cents to raise them over there. First of all, shout out to everybody that felt uncomfortable because white boys said Africa too many times. Uh, you racist motherfuckers. I didn't say anything racist. You judgmental as shit. I said a place that exists, motherfucker. There's nothing racist. The point of the joke is I'm cheap as shit. That's the point of the joke. Don't get uncomfortable with me. You know, like, spin a little and look at some places. That's what's going on, man. You could have brought me here too. What's up, y'all? What? Act like y'all happy to be here. Act like y'all know Jesus and fuck. Y'all having a good time? That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Let's get right to the point. All the people that's in here in the relationship, where y'all at? You happy in your relationship? Make me sick because you got some goddamn body. Where the single people at? Where y'all at? Fuck up. Oh, happy ass nigga. Ooh, I'm in a relationship. Fuck up. Oh, what? Man, I hear, hear this relationship. That's your wife, you with? That, oh, your girl. Okay, handsome dude, beautiful lady. Okay, y'all been together over two years? Oh, y'all just met? That nigga looking like, yeah, nigga, we just. Look, how long y'all been doing each other? I heard about coming here. I just said, let's go here. I'm right here though, that nigga talk to me like I don't really know what You know I heard about this! You know what, I'm gonna leave you to fuck alone, I'm for real, nigga. You need to just go and fuck out on this couple right here, good husband and wife. Thanks again, no you ain't, nigga, you're lying. How long you been with her, over two years? About eight years. Two years, they love each other, I know they can tell, y'all trust each other, right? This is how you can tell them you're in a relationship and you can trust the motherfucker you with. If you sit next to a nigga you dating, pull your phones out, unlock them and hand them to each other right now. Go ahead, bow, go. Yeah. Bow, look, this nigga ain't moved now. Yeah. Yeah. They got to like that deal anyway, man. Fuck this nigga in these jokes. And fuck this nigga in these bitch ass jokes, nigga. 
Let me get through this. When you insert the fingers in, if you push them in quick, it's gonna push the lips in, it's gonna hurt her. You just fuck the mood up. You wanna slide them in. When no fingers get in, you press up and to the front. You press the fingers up, move your fingers towards your mouth. At this point, ladies, it's gonna feel like you gotta pee. That's not pee, let that shit the fuck on out. I'm trying to tell y'all something. Now, this is where you get the squirt at. Now, at this point, when you do that, you move your fingers a little slower. You move your tongue faster. She got two different sensations. At this point, you take your left hand, you rest it on her breast. You don't grab the titty, you don't pinch the nipple, you run your, th you run your thumb across it. She got three different sensations. Now, at this point, she ain't got no choice, because this don't start to squirt out. Now, a lot of y'all niggas ain't used to this, so when it start to squirt out, y'all gonna move out the way. But a nigga like me, I'm used to it. When she start to squirt, I'm gonna open up my mouth and let the bitch squirt my mouth. Never mind, y'all ain't running. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm trying to tell these niggas. I don't know. I'm trying to tell these niggas how to get the squirt through. I'm tired of you standing up, though, man. You scared me when you stand up. <laughs> a nigga took me wrong, nigga. <laughs> It's making me nervous. <laughs> That's a man right there, dog. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, man, a couple more things I'm gonna get out of here. Let's get the party out. Hey, man, I get to travel a lot doing this comedy shit. Uh, I'm not afraid of flying. I'm actually afraid of the people that work for the airlines. The story I'm about to tell is 100% true. I flew Spirit Airlines to Las Vegas. Exactly. That was mistake number one. I see why they call spirit, you this close to meet Jesus. That nigga sitting on the wing of the plane, I'll see you in about 10 minutes. True shit, I'm looking out the window when the plane pull up, I noticed on the side of the plane that it was a dent, a big ass dent on the side of the plane. That's not normal for an aircraft. So I think I'm gonna ask about this. So I get on the plane, I'm like, excuse me, Miss Flight Attendant Lady, look. I noticed when the plane was pulling up, I noticed that it was a dent on the side of the plane. This bitch looked me dead in my face and said, Sir, that's neither here nor there. We hit something. Could you please take your seat? What the fuck did you hit in the sky? <laughs> a cloud came and it hit my kids. Now I'm nervous as shit because I got the flat spirit back. Go to Vegas, do my show on the way back. I'm not making this story up. The pilot said, uh, listen, uh, we got a three and a half hour flight back to Detroit, and right outside of Detroit we have thunderstorms. When I get to them, I'll put the seatbelt sign on and get you through it. That's cool, that's pilot talk. We get to the storm. This nigga came back on the system. I'm not making this up and said, uh, uh, passengers, listen, uh, the storm clouds that I was talking about when we finally approached. Under normal circumstances, what they want us to do is to fly above all storm clouds. But I actually think this plane is quick enough for us to outlook in this car. I said, hold the fuck up. Hey, 13 ain't got up here for no rights. Do this on your own goddamn time. And you know you stand as a man with your voice crack like, so please don't race these cars. What the fuck? Don't race them and knock on me in. Listen, we didn't beat the clouds out. We didn't call the storm. We hit a pocket, dropped down a thousand feet. When it dropped, it shook real hard. When this plane dropped and shook, instead of this man saying some company to let us know everything is gonna be all right, I kid you not, when it dropped and shook, this son of a bitch went, ooh, 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 that was a good one. What the fuck you mean that was a good one? And why are you playing with us, son? But listen, that wasn't even the scary part. The scary part is when I got off the plane and I heard this nigga talking to the mechanic. He was like, yeah, see, when the landing gear came out, it was like a blook up, blook up. I mean, that's the same thing that came out of my Are you fucking with me right now? My car don't even run away. Why the fuck are you on? Oh, man.
relationships. It don't fucking matter. Dogs, cats, we talk about everything. But I got mad out there to come out there and support, support the first night, man. And it's a beautiful crowd and it's beautiful guys on the point. That's what's up. Give yourself a hand and a club, man. You do what you But I do want to say before I get out of here, ladies, y'all doing your thing. You're making all this money, you're driving nice cars, but ladies, y'all getting a little too cocky. Y'all got to slow up. I had a young lady tell me what kind of car she drive one day, and I didn't even ask her. She walked right up in my face and was like, hey, nigga, 745. I said, no, it's about 930, because I got here about 9 o'clock. No, nigga, that's what the fuck I drive. I said, well, bitch, 1020. She was like, what the fuck is that? That's what kind of bus coming. I'm a missy sitting and talking to you. But I noticed that women want guys that got cars with numbers and initials because that indicate expensive. CLK 430, LX 300, Q45, they want numbers and initials. Fellas, I'll find a way around that. The next time a woman asks you what kind of car you drive, tell her exactly what you drive. Only in numbers and initials. I told a girl one night, she said, nigga, you all right here and earn thing. What kind of car do you drive? I said, shit, I drive an 84 ES, 4.5, 600. She was like, oh my Jesus, I don't fuck around and hit a lick. That's what's up. I'm like, what you want to do? I want to go for a ride and look for more. All right, cool, we get outside the club. She see all these nice cars and get excited, like, okay, male. Which one of the cars is yours, boo? I said, you see the gray drop top Mercedes right there? Is that your shit? <laughs> Hell no! It's the one right next to it with the bag on the window and the donut. That's mine right there. It's so wrong with that tire, too, because every time I make a left turn, it's like a book of book of five on the left side of that bitch. Look, so she gonna get an attitude. You got me fucked up. In the club, you told me you drove an 84ES 4.5 600. What the fuck is that? I said, that is one. Technically, I just neglected to tell you what it stood for. And that's an 84 Escort stick. Four cylinder, five speed, and I paid 600 for this bitch. You ever ride it? And God bless y'all, man. I'm gonna get out of here.